and Pay and this is Jared. And this is Kid Talk. Kid Talk is where we talk to people who make games, design games. And pretty much anyone who likes games. Yeah. And today we're interviewing Julia Hearn with Greenbrier Games. Hi. Hi. How's your day hey. been? My day so far has been pretty busy with emails. Thanks for asking. That's how our mom's morning is normally. <laughs> you have a lot of emails from other people. It's fair. It's fair. Thanks for spending some of your day with us. Oh, I was happy to. Thanks for having me. For this episode of Kid Talk, we're trying something different. Normally, we just go right into our questions, but, but now we're going to do five-second rule. Because we gonna all play like five board second. games. Yeah, we all like board games. This is just going to introduce Kid Talk with a board game. So let's play one. I'm in. Okay. Let's do it. So this first one is a sample. It's always name three things, but you have to name three things in five seconds, which sounds easy, but it's hard. There is a timer included, but we're not using it. Yeah, it makes a lot of noise. Not good for recording, right? Nope. Except okay, weird, so you're going to give me a clue or a word, and then I have to give you at least three back within five seconds. So that's the rules? It's no, it says, like, name three something, and you have to name... Okay, so you give me a clue, and then I have to give you three examples within five seconds. First card... Name three crayon colors. Go. Brown, green, black. Okay. Okay. Name three snacks made with chocolate. Chocolate chip. Chocolate bar. Are you doing this one? Okay. <laughs> Let her do one, Paige. <laughs> no, it's okay. You could have <laughs> taken that one. I was good. Um, okay. Okay. Do over. Ready? Ask again. <laughs> Name three plants. Aloe, hyacinth, forsythia. Okay, that was in exactly five seconds. Name three things that make you look cool. Oh, there are nothing that make me look cool. I'm in trouble with that one. Pass. <laughs> Name three types of hats. Name three types of pass? <laughs> hats. Hats? Um, baseball hat? A cowboy? <laughs> I don't know. Bonnet. Fedora. <laughs> what? Fedora. Well, she Fedora. got exactly three. And... Okay. And now name three dice games. Uh, Ninja dice. Uh, dice throne. Done. And... Ah! You should have done Barbarian Battlegrounds. Ah! It's right behind me. <laughs> well, it's, it's, right right dice. it's right there, too. We have Dice Throne, Barbarian Battlegrounds, but we've heard of Ninja Dice. We don't have it yet. Okay. Totally fair. It's cool because it's, it's a Ninja Dice as the box. It is. And now to the questions. So you've already made Barbarian Battlegrounds, and I know that there's a new game coming out called Tales of Barbaria. Yes. There's also Lost Ones, but... Besides that, what's next for Greenbrier Games? Oh, like, so we're not even going to get next? into what's happening coming up. We're going to do the going forward. Uh, I can tell you about that. We've okay. been working on two games currently that we are still developing. So the designs are done, but developing is, you know, uh, play testing it, making sure the rules make sense, making sure all the little things aren't like when you're playing it, you don't go, I don't know what this is. Why are we doing this? One is a really big game called Fire for Light that's going to have a lot of, it's a narrative game, so storytelling. So it has a little bit of an RPG role-playing game feel, but not as complicated as a lot of RPGs so that it's still a lot more family-friendly where a lot more people can play it. So that one takes a lot of work because there's a lots of stories we have to write. There's lots of maps. There's going to be miniatures. It's a big, it's a big project. And then our smaller project is a game called Valkyries. And Valkyries was designed by Kathleen Mercury. And it's a pickup and delivery game. So a pickup and delivery game is a game where you're carrying things and trying to get them to other locations as part yeah. of your, your action. You're a Valkyrie, and Valkyries were known to 
inspire warriors, Viking warriors in battle. So you're taking your Valkyrie meeple and going along lines to pick up the Vikings and get them to fight each other. And then one of them in abstract, not in reality, dies in glorious battle. And then the Valkyrie has to take them to Valhalla where they celebrate being a great warrior. So really it's more of an abstract. You're trying to figure out the puzzle of moving them around the board and get them matched up so that you can take the right one off. Um, but it has some silliness to it with the art, which is going to be very similar to Barbarian Battlegrounds. Except um, with less bears. Less bears, more Valkyries. How did you figure out the name Greenbrier Games? Oh, that's a good question. So, our very first game was called the apocalypse and it was about being in like a zombie apocalypse so i don't know if I, you're probably too young to watch zombie movies or any of the horror stuff yeah i don't know whether i don't know whether to say no or yes i just don't know, you don't know. we are not you don't know if you're gonna get in trouble if you say yes fair enough okay no, so i don't know how to answer it no, oh. we are not old enough. Yes, you are correct. There we go. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, so, our first game was Zpocalypse. And we didn't know we were going to start a company. We just wanted to design a game. When we decided that we weren't just going to make the game, we were going to become a board game company, we... Um, <sighs> We couldn't agree on a name because we did, you know, at first we, th we were just going to be the Zpocalypse company. We're like, no, that sounds terrible because what if we make other games that aren't about zombies and people are not going to want to buy them because they think we're just the zombie company, which sounds hilarious, but also probably not a good name for a business. Yeah. So, <laughs> so Greenbrier Hotel is a hotel in West Virginia that was made in 1920, so 100 years ago, that has a basement that they used uh, as a bomb shelter when uh, World War II was happening. So when they were afraid that maybe uh, during war times, if you had to be safe, they, the people in the hotel could go down in the basement. And our artist was from West Virginia and he had talked about if there was a real zombie apocalypse, he would hide at the Greenbrier Hotel in their, in their bomb shelter because he figured it's a fancy hotel. So if they had a bomb shelter, they probably had really fancy snacks down there. And that's where he'd want to stay to hide out from the zombies because they'd have like the best snacks. <laughs> so <laughs> that's what the name became. Greenbrier was named after the Greenbrier Hotel because in our first game, you start in a hotel basement because you were hiding there from the zombies and then you have to go out and fight the zombies. So that's where the name came from. Hmm. That that's actually a really cool story. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> from the name, I expected it to have something to do with a tree. Everybody, everybody thinks it's, you know, just the pretty, the floor. No, it's from a hotel, which yeah, I have never visited. It sounds like the name of a type of tree. It does. It does um, sound like a different tree. What do you think you would do if you weren't working in the board game industry that's another good question um so huh, first i was i started acting when i was five and i was in theater and when i got to college i decided that instead of acting anymore because i'd already been acting for 12 years by then i was going to stage manage and a stage manager is somebody who works behind the scenes and makes sure all the lights go up and, you know, everybody gets on stage when they're supposed to. People have the right costumes. And I did that. And I worked in Washington, D.C. at the Smithsonian's Children's Theater. And when I was working there, I realized, hey, I like working with kids a lot. This seems cool. So I went back to school and got my master's degree in teaching. But while I was getting my master's, I wrote about how I wanted to incorporate board games in my classroom because I think that people learn better playing board games. So I wrote this whole big paper about it. And then people who hired me to be a teacher said, great, make board games so that kids can learn better. So I did for 12 years. And then I stopped doing it for schools and I started doing it for 
people who want to just do it for fun. So if I wasn't doing this, I would probably go back to doing that since I've already done two other jobs in my life. I think that's still board games. One of them. That's still board games. Still board games, but it was teaching board games. It was also being a teacher in a classroom. Will you go back to acting or the teaching or the teacher? I don't know. That's a good question. Do I have to pick? Like right now, I have to pick. I'm on the spot. Just think about it All during right. this. I'll, at the I'll end, we'll ask you. you again. All right, fair. What's your role at Greenbrier Games? So I am the vice president and COO at Greenbrier Games, which is a really cool, impressive sounding title that really means, uh, so COO means chief operations officer, which means I do all the spreadsheet work, all the, answering all the emails. Um, some people like to say it's the boring stuff in the board game industry. I like to say that I'm playing a really complicated Euro with a lot of, a lot of meeples, so many meeples, moving them around, making sure they all go to the right place. Um, so in doing that, I have done in my company, I've been a designer, a writer, a developer, a production manager. I am in charge of logistics, which is all of the making sure the games get shipped from where they're manufactured in China to the countries they're going to from that country's port where they land on a ship to the actual location where they're being distributed from where they're being distributed to either the store or the customer that's buying it directly. A lot of moving parts. So I do all of that. And then I do all of the marketing and sales. That's six jobs. You work at it? Yes. <laughs> Not expecting yes. Yes, it, it is. It doesn't seem like a lot of jobs, but the way you just said it makes it sound like it, like it would take a long time just to do all. It takes of them. a long time. Yeah. My, I'm never good. bored. I'm never bored. It's this hard to be good. bored when you't constantly doing something. Yeah. This isn't really a question. This isn't a question about board games, but it's a question. So if you had any superpower, what would it be? Oh. If I had a superpower, what would it be? Any superpower. Um, if t okay, I, over my life, I've had two that I've kind of like gone back and forth on. One, if I could, when I'm driving around, the roads like automatically fix themselves so there's no potholes and no construction anywhere ever, that so would be one superpower. Force, so yes. You can basically use the force or your wheels to like just fix all of, so that there is never any construction on the road, never potholes, never icy con road conditions. Like everywhere I drive, the roads just become perfect. So, so that's balance. one. The, the other one that I flip flop between is if I could put everything on pause and go take a nap and then like put it back on so that like I could take more time to just take a break and Are nothing nice. happens so that I don't like lose time. It reminds me of something in a movie where someone did or someone did pause, and then he said fast forward to the end. And yeah, I don't want fast some, forward. I just want pause. And he said something, and um, he said he doesn't understand something, and the person who was talking to you said, "What well, I don't understand is how you're using." An invisible remote to control time. Fair enough. I feel like because you do so much, it would be a lot easier if you had the speed power. Like if you had the power just to the pause go really button. fast all of a sudden, and then just. Oh, see, but if I had the pause button, I could do stuff. And then when I start going, you know what? I've spent too much time on work. I just need a break. I could pause and like go have a snack. What I thought you would do is. A superpower that finishes your work automatically. Oh. So here's the trick about that. If I something did it for me, then I wouldn't know what was going on. And then I'd just constantly be being like, well, you do that and not know what's happening in my own company. And I feel like that's a recipe for disaster. Yeah, probably. Yeah. 
you know, like, oh yeah, you just take care of that. And suddenly they're like, oh my goodness, I love your game about toe fungus. It's amazing. And I'll be like, what? <laughs> what happened? That was a game about butterflies. What? What? Like that, something like that would happen, I feel like, if just automatically finished. Yeah, probably. And I mean, toe fungus is an amazing topic, and I'm sure so many people would want to play a game about it. But do I want to leave that to just automatically getting done without my knowing about it? No. No. I would play every game that I make. I didn't hear the question. I would play every game I make. You think? Okay, that's fair. Do you have a favorite thing to study that doesn't have anything to do with board games? I have lots of things that I love and uh, love to study and I'm curious about. Like, um, I was thinking like trees or the sky or something like that, because I like studying meteorology. Oh, that's a great one. So meteorology, weather systems, super fun. Because um, the, water, the water cycle is fascinating but of course i turned that into a board game so let's try to pick something that i haven't turned into a board <laughs> game which is hard because i turn everything into a board game at least in my head not all of them get published but i gamify he, a lot he knows how lightning forms i kind of know how lightning forms because i don't really understand anything that you're saying about lightning. so adams and there's atoms and there's protons and there's neutrons and electrons and electrons have a negative charge. And when they rub up together, you know how you rub your, like if you rub your feet on the it, ground with socks and then you can get the little- It's because they get electric charge and when all the big water droplets hit the ground, then they make lightning. Well, in general, in the air too. So the molecules are all basically up against each other, but it's like when you rub your feet on a rug yeah, with like socks. One, when one hits the ground, then it goes, the electric, they, the electric they shoot right charge back up. Yep. goes all the way up. Uh-huh. Super fun. So, let's see. Something I haven't turned into a game, though. It can uh, be a game that hasn't been, like... Invented? Yeah, like a game that you just made in your head, but it wasn't turned into any, like, physical thing. I'm wondering Fair. how... Because if you turn not. everything into a board game, then this it's really is hard, right? I like to gamify everything. That is my f even even now, even after doing it for a job for years, I spend so much time going, hmm, how do I make that into something that's fun to play? And I'm yes. not sure. It's just it's how my brain works. But any let's see. Uh, yes, that is how my brain works, too. I love to gamify everything. I would say probably theater. Theater is the the one that is my other thing that I did that I still love that I don't gamify. I just like to go and enjoy and see live theater, seeing people get up on stage and perform, whether it's a play or a musical or even just or concert, things like that. I like seeing people perform and in a live setting because I still know anything can happen and they're going to have to like improv or figure it out if something messed up happens. Um, so that's like one of my favorite things is to go see a live show. And yes, I'll watch, you know, the main actors because that's, they're the big deal and they're the story and everything. But I also love taking time to look at like the guy in the back who's just standing there, like the guy who's a guard or, you know, like somebody who's not, doesn't even have any lines because they don't, they're on stage. It's not even like a camera can cut away from them and see if they hold character the entire time. Because most of the time, I'm going to let you know, they don't. And it's hilarious to me. So that's the thing that I like to do. Well, I'm really good at acting and I'm wanting to act for Marvel. Nice. That is an awesome goal. Yeah, he's been going to, talking about that for a while. We're going to first. To, I'm going to make the first movie I'm wanting to make is called The Legend of Sarah. Which Sarah me? being our neighbor. Nice. So you want to act, or do you want to write superhero like comics? You want to act. I'm also. I'm already great at acting. I would be the one to write the superhero comics. Yeah. Nice. That also, is fantastic. Part of it is he's writing it, he's writing in a book because there's a book called Sarah the Legend that I'm going to make. 
So he's writing the book, and it, like, goes into the book and shows the whole story. Nice. That is another awesome and amazing skill set. And being a comic book writer and or artist is actually, there's a lot of similarities to that industry as there are to board games. Um, I I've, are, yeah. I already have written a few comics, but I have never, I've written them and I usually lose them in my art box. <laughs> well, you know, there's, there is a philosophy um, that, and you keep practicing and you keep practicing and you keep practicing and you think about how you're going to improve where you don't worry about the stuff until you get to a point where you think you are improved enough that it is worthy of sharing. So the fact that you're not holding on to them and you're constantly trying to do the next thing and the next thing is a whole way of thinking of, of instead of holding on to something and not being able to think about how to make it better is something that's good for becoming great at that particular thing. Except I have a, except I have to think a lot when I'm remaking the board game I've been making for a long time. Yes. The funny thing is that I heard that like the opposite way. If you write something or draw something, just keep working on it constantly and it will always get better and it's never finished until you think that it's finished. Like, just keep working on it and don't move on to something else until you think that it's finished. Interesting. So. I heard it, like, the entirely opposite way. So. But I've never done that. I always just move on to something different. Here's the, uh, I'm going to disagree with that philosophy. Um, and here's why. I have worked with a lot of designers and I've designed myself. And if you work on the same thing over and over and over to perfect it, the truth of the matter is we are not perfect beings. Nobody is perfect, right? So you're never going to finish it. So you have to be able to get to a point where you realize this is good enough to share and you have to have a, you know, it's hard to get a good feeling of what that is because your first one, you know, it's the burnt pancake. It's never going to be the greatest. It's your first. Like the first time you rode a bike, were you awesome at it? No. No. Did you get better? Yes. Yes. Well, but I you, rode a bike. Right. But ever, think of every time you get on a bike as a new design, not the same design. If you are always trying to fix the first time you do something, you know, it, and it might be great. It might be amazing, but it's not going to be as good as the second, third, fourth. So when I get a designer who has, who hands me a new design, my first question to them is, what's your next design? What's the next thing you're working on? And if they say, oh, no, 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 I've been working on this for 15 years, I go, thank you. I am not going to publish this because they're never going to be willing to hand it to me to actually finish and put in other people's hands to play. They can't. It's too, it's too I think, scary for them maybe to, to, to give that to other people to judge whether it's good enough or bad enough. But if they have, oh, this is my next game and my next game and my next game, then they know, I know they're going to work on perfecting, but they are also willing to move on to the next project and the next project. The way so, I, after you said the first thing, like every time you get on a bike, that's a new game. Yeah. What I thought you were saying was if you design the first game and it's like not that good, if you move on to the next game, then that game's going to be better than the first one. Yes. And it just keeps exactly getting right. better and better, even though you're not even working on the same game. Correct. You're perfecting your craft. You're perfecting your skills. You're not perfecting that one thing that's never going to be perfect enough because nothing is ever perfect. Um, ever. What is that barrier battleground behind you? Which one? The one that's right behind you on that shelf. This? No. Other other side. This. Yes. This? Yes. 
It looks like a different Barbarian Battleground. This would be Tales of Barbaria. Oh. Oh, that looks so really cute. Thank you. Um, so speaking of designing and never getting anything perfect, uh, this was so the first Barbarian Battlegrounds that you've played was Walter and Ian. They designed it. And then we said, hey, we want an expansion. And instead, they gave me almost an entirely another game. But they said, this is an expansion. And I said, no, it's not. It, it, it needs to be finished and be a complete game. And they're like, well, we've been working on it for a long time and we can't. I don't think we can. We can't do it because we've been working on it, working on it, and and we can't let it go. So I am a co-designer because I actually made it go from seventy-five percent game, overmade expansion to an actual finished game. So in this game, you can do all the things that you do in Barbarian Battlegrounds, but you also go adventuring. So you would put out cards and the cards are locations. So instead of just gaining glory by fighting each other, you can also get glory by going out and doing adventurous deeds uh, and gaining, you know, your glory, people's telling tales of your amazing feats by going out to the different locations. So you have location cards where you can... But... Does that mean that there's more glory that you have to get to win, or is it just a shorter game? Uh, instead of doing it by most glory wins, we also have a tracker. So it's nine rounds, three rounds per season, spring, summer, fall. So you're trying to get the most glory before you go into high bear nation huh. in the winter. <laughs> it looks so much different than that version. Then, uh, I can't. I can't. Oh. Oh, there it, is. it does look really different from this, but it's well, still really cool. Yes. The thing I like about the art. Yep. Is so how you still. You made it. it so that it looks mad when you have it like this, but when you flip the box over, it's happy. <laughs> Awesome. So that Did one you, you can see, they're all taught, like, it's all about the focusing on the fighting and everything like that, the the combat, the brawling. And this one, you can see you're, it's the whole map of Barbaria, and you're going off adventuring while you can still also do the brawl phase. Except that seems like there would not be as much brawling. You know, you can still do it, um, <laughs> but but there's more paths to choose from so that there are more ways that you can win the game or, or different paths to choose. So, to that seems point. like it would be this with that, the expansion, yeah. but in its own box. That's what I was right. saying. So it's its own game, its own standalone, and then also it has its own expansion. So you remember what I said my Weird. first game was? Mm -hmm. First About? game was uh, this. And then that's an expansion. No, my first game ever for the company. We talked about it at the beginning. It was the uh, it was the Z apocalypse thing. Z apocalypse, the zombie apocalypse. So, we went back to our roots, and Barbaria is overrun by zombears, <laughs> which are more like gummy bears and candy. So, I'm not sure but how that works. They're like walking evil gummy right. bears. So, so it looks like you, it has a bite in its head. So the expansion adds the zombies at the locations. So if you don't fight off the zombies, everybody, all your villages get attacked. So it adds that extra layer. But to help you in the expansion, you also get heroes. So you get special dice that you can roll. And those are, if you get the symbol on the die, you get to do your hero bear special action in addition to all your other dice. That one was a panda. So our mom told us that you write some of the flavor text for games at Greenbrier. Yeah. Um, have you always been writing flavor text or did you just start doing that when you started working at Greenbrier? No, uh, I've written... <laughs> Uh, my, my my whole life. So you were talking about writing comics. I wrote plays. I wanted to be in theater. I did acting. So I wrote, I've written and published a whole bunch of children's plays and directed some of them. 
I wrote short stories and poems that have been published. So I never wrote like <coughs> novels. All of my things have been pretty short. So when I started working at Greenbrier, it was a really good fit because you have to get a lot of information in in a really short, like on a card or, uh, you know, you have to do it. And so my skills at writing were a really good fit for flavor text in a game. And so that's how I started in the company because um, Jeff had started to design the zombie apocalypse game and he had the a lot of the mechanisms of of how to he liked searching and exploring so he had a lot of those down but he had these characters and jeff's background is not being a teacher or a writer or in theater jeff's background is being an engineer so that means he's really good at math and problem solving it also means that he is not a very good writer he knows this we all know our strengths and weaknesses. His is, writing is not his strength. So I was reading the characters that he had created by then. And I just looked at him and I said, hey, can I fix these? And he said, what do you mean? I was like, um, by fixing them, I mean, can I take them and make completely new characters and new stories about them? And he said, sure. <laughs> And so I took them and removed them completely from the game and gave him completely new characters with how they could fight and how they could search and explore and new abilities. And he's like, these are so much better. Can you do this for weapons? And I was like, yep. And then he's like, can you do this for side quests? And I said, yes. And then suddenly I was part of the company. That's, that's kind of how it worked. So <laughs> that's how I got into it. Hmm. Hmm. Um, can you give me some tips for writing? <laughs> I I All made right. a Lego character and made a story and I would like to f make the story and actually like make it an actual small story. Oh, that's but awesome. I, but yeah. I need help. Okay. So It wasn't as good as I wanted it to be. Uh, it, so burnt pancake. It's never going to be as good as you want it to be, but you, what do you do? So when you first start writing, you know, like if you keep going back to it and keep going back to it, that's that's one thing. But if the first thing I like to do is just get the words out. I don't revise. I don't edit as I write in the back of my brain. I've been writing now for many, many, many years. Um, and I still there's still a little voice in the back of my head that says, oh, that sounds dumb. Oh, you could write that better. Uh, and I ignore it. I say be quiet you and I keep writing and I get it down even if I think it sounds terrible so that I can get everything out of my brain the whole story if that makes sense yes then I walk away for at least a little while like I don't go back and immediately start editing because all the things that the little voice in my head said were terrible I'm immediately gonna zoom in on them and pick them apart and and say and and do that thing where I say that I'm not good. So I walk away. I go have a snack. I go eat lunch. I take a walk. Um, I do. I answer emails because sometimes you can just have to answer emails. Then I go back to it and I read it when my brain has been clear of all that and I'm just starting fresh and I reread. And yeah, a lot of the times I've wrote something and I know I can write it better. But at that point, I'm not beating myself up. I'm just going, okay, now fix it. And I fix it then. And I read it out loud so that it's sound if to see if it sounds good in my ears because sometimes when you do something over and over you're uh, you know you just stop reading certain parts of it you're, you you kind of jump over it but if i read it out loud my ears will tell me if it makes sense or not hmm. so that's that's what i do and then and then i give it to somebody else to look at and give me feedback somebody i trust somebody i respect and somebody who's going to give me feedback that isn't going to make me sad but also help me get better so that's the other trick of being a good writer is find those people maybe it's another writer and you share and you read their stuff and give them feedback maybe it's a professional editor that you pay when you're older and you have the money to do that so step one ignore the things that say that it's bad and just get it out there step two take a break before you revise it 
Step three, find people that you trust to help you get better. Three easy steps. There you go. Hmm. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. So last season, we ended all of our interviews with a couple would you rathers, but now we're ending them with a game called A Little More Conversation from Gamely Games, which is kind of the same thing, but it's from A Little More Conversation. So <laughs> can we ask you a few of them? Of course. It's, a, it's another game that we all like. Yay. Or, we all like games, so let's just end it with a game. What is a smell that you love? What is a smell that I love? Fresh, cleaned sheets. Okay. Why do you like the smell? Oh, because it reminds me of my grandmother, who we used to call our lovey, would hang them out on the line to dry out in the sun, and she'd take them right, like, so my job was to help her fold them when I come and visit, and so I can smell it and I can think about her. Hmm. My question is, what do you like more, sushi or burrito? Sushi. Are you an early bird or a night owl? Night owl. I am, I am too. I'm both. What's one of your favorite ice cream flavors? Um, I am allergic to dairy, <laughs> but one of my ice dessert favorite flavors is pistachio <laughs> that's the same answer we got last time we asked this question no way Everyone that's awesome <laughs> it's, i know it's like it's not a kid flavor i, I, I as a kid that. it was always like whatever had the most chocolate in it but things change what I are you like gonna pistachios. do i don't oh, like i nice. never had pistachio ice cream though i wouldn't do for my favorite is probably mint chocolate chip, not because it's a chocolate chip, the mint. Nice. And um, sweet or savory? Savory. I, I still don't know. Thanks for spending some of your time with us today. Yeah, this was really fun. And thanks for giving me some advice on writing. Mm -hmm. I was happy to help. Yeah, I think it's going to help me with that story that I'm wanting to write. I can't wait to see you again. Yeah. See you Bye. later. Bye. Thanks for hanging out with us on this episode of Kid Talk. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any future episodes. See you later. Bye.